Hi, today we will be discussing water fluoridation. Fluoride in drinking water has been a hot topic in the past decade. Some communities are all for it and some are completely against it. With such a range of opinions on the matter, some organizations have taken it upon themselves to present the pros and the cons of the fluoride to the public so they can make their informed decisions. A little bit of history about fluoridation. In the 1930s, scientists examined the relationship between tooth decaying children and naturally occurring fluoride in drinking water. The study found that children who drank water with naturally high levels of fluoride had less tooth decay. This discovery was important because during that time, most children and adults in the United States were affected by tooth decay. Many suffered from toothaches and painful extractions, often losing permanent teeth including molars, even as teenagers. In 1945, the city of Grand Rapids, Michigan was the first to add fluoride to its city water system in order to provide residents with the benefits of fluoride. Since 1945, hundreds of cities have started community water fluoridation. In fact, by 2012, nearly 75% of the United States served by community water system had access to fluoridated water. The CDC named community water fluoridation as one of 10 great public health achievements by the 20th century. Why should we invest in community water fluoridation? The biggest benefit of water fluoridation is that it prevents tooth decay. And as we know, the population of the United States is living longer with more of the population retaining their natural teeth, thus making prevention of tooth decay the top priorities of dentists worldwide. But how does fluoride do that? Well, the enamel protecting our teeth is made of hydroxyapatite crystals, which are strong but demineralize at a critical pH of 5.5 due to the excretion of acids by bacteria and biofilms on our teeth. Fluoride ions present in the oral cavity are able to inhibit demineralization and enhance remineralization by forming fluoroapatite crystals, which are structurally similar to hydroxyapatite crystals, but are more resistant to acidic pHs with a critical pH of 4.5. Thus, fluoroapatite crystals provide a stronger and more acid-resistant protective coating on the enamel. Now that we know how fluoride works, what are some other benefits? Studies have shown that one-fourth of tooth decay in children and adults is prevented by water fluoridation alone. When combined with other fluoride treatments such as fluoride toothpaste and varnishes, the effects are even greater. It is natural and safe. Fluoride is naturally present in bodies of water such as the ocean and in drinking water. What community water fluoridation does is it adjusts the amount of fluoride present to an adequate level for preventing tooth decay, which is 0.7 parts per million. It saves money. The cost to provide water fluoridation for a lifetime per person is less than the cost of one dental filling. On average, for every $1 invested in water fluoridation, you save $38 in dental treatment. And in communities as small as 20,000 people, the cost per capita to provide water fluoridation is only 50 cents per person per year. There is evidence and support for it by many healthcare organizations. Studies on community water fluoridation have been conducted for over 70 years, and the consensus is, is that it's safe and effective. Community water fluoridation is also endorsed by organizations such as the U.S. Surgeon General, CDC, American Dental Association, World Health Organization, and more. Let's talk conspiracy theories. During the 1950s and 1960s, during the height of the Red Scare, the public thought that fluoridation in the water systems was a communist plot to undermine American public health. This fear of contamination through the water supply through espionage or grand conspiracy has persisted through pop culture throughout the ages. A more recent conspiracy with an almost cult-like following has been the claim that fluoride has been placed in the water as a form of mind control supplement. Could it be that when such a simple compound is added to water, the consumers become mindless government followers? Who's to say? Well, we are. There have been many similar outlandish claims over the years with little to no supporting evidence. Over the years, many public health studies have been done to evaluate these claims about the true effect of having fluoride added to the water and if it was safe and effective. Fluoride is added to the water at a concentration of one part per million according to the CDC. In other areas, fluoride is naturally occurring in the water at a concentration of about three parts per million. 
Longitudinal studies have compared relative IQs, dental caries incidence, relative overall health, and the possibility of dental fluorosis caused by the ingestion of fluoride between these communities. What they found was that at four parts per million, children developed a higher incidence of dental fluorosis. There is some evidence in support of the idea that fluoride in the water supply slows the progression of dental caries. A 2007 meta-analysis done by the CDC concluded that water fluoridation reduced the rate of dental caries in adults by 27%. So what can we take from this data? We have ample evidence suggesting that fluoride in topical treatments is effective in reducing the rate of dental caries. We also have some studies that suggest that the addition to drinking water is beneficial. But is there evidence suggesting that fluoride is a mind-controlling chemical developed by the Soviets to undermine public health and turn us into drones? There just haven't been enough studies done by the Illuminati to tell.